The House voted 368 to 57 to pass a bill giving nearly $40 billion in emergency aid to Ukraine last night, beefing up Biden's original ask from $33 billion. 57 Republicans voted against the aid package, however, not one House Democrat objected. The bill does not include any further COVID aid for the American people, as we noted earlier this week. Now, according to the New York Times, top administration officials warned Congress they would run out of resources to send to Ukraine before the end of next week. Mm. At a political fundraiser on Monday, President Joe Biden said he's worried Russian President Vladimir Putin does not have a way out of the Ukraine war. Biden said Putin had mistakenly believed the invasion of Ukraine would break up NATO and the EU. U.S. Intelligence Chief Avril D. Haynes told the Senate Armed Services Committee even if Russia were successful in taking the Donbas region of eastern Ukraine, which is one of its ultimate goals in the war, it would not end the war. Haynes said, quote, we assess President Putin is preparing for a prolonged conflict in Ukraine during which he still intends to achieve goals beyond the Donbas, end quote. And if that's true, then this is just going to go on forever until and they're going to face a kind of guerrilla situation where there's Ukrainian resistance and there's, you know, explosions and people dying for the for for, for years and years and years, decades until they eventually give up. Yeah. And for what? Not for absolutely nothing. There's any real belief that this will end outside of a t- diplomatic channel uh, but because of America's own foreign policy interests, which people are increasingly out loud saying is to weaken Russia. Yeah. It's yeah. it's moving very quickly into full on Cold war, war, war territory. People are using the word proxy war very openly on television. And everyone seems to believe that there's no real risk for a hot war with a nuclear power. I mean, I remember having conversations and doing interviews just a month or so ago with all kinds of nuclear experts about how these things escalate over time. And they were concerned. They were really concerned. And it feels odd that even as the crisis has escalated, people's concern about what could potentially be the ultimate outcome of two nuclear powers being in conflict seems to be less and less a part of the conversation. Right. I mean, well, like you said yesterday, I think we were we were in this proxy war with them for 50 years the last time. Mm. <laughs> it could be another 50 years. Yeah. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had this to say to Americans who are worried about where the aid to Ukraine is going. Let's watch. The impact that his that it is having on food for the world. So when you're home thinking, what is this all about? Just think about when I was hungry, you fed me in the Gospel of Matthew. It also is so pleased that Mr. Meeks, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, was with us. Doesn't the aid include weapons? Yeah, this is (laughs) so disingenuous. And as many Republicans pointed out, I hate that they're the ones that are open, owning this argument because Democrats won't say it. On one hand, we have a baby food shortage and we have American parents unable to literally feed their children. On the other hand, Nancy Pelosi, who apparently seems silent on that, but very willing, the government is very willing, a bipartisan you know, group is very willing to come up with $40 billion to send to the other side of the world. And people are putting this together. People are putting together that there always seems to be money for military assistance. There always seems to be money for war. Um, but but that, but that there's never the same conversation about how are we going to pay for it never emerges when we're talking about funding weapons. You have Joe Biden voting with his feet and showing his priorities, spending last week down at the Lockheed Martin plant uh, in the South. You have them really openly, flagrantly um, uh, displaying the revolving door from the defense industry with Lloyd Austin coming in from Raytheon. You can see these defense contractors like salivating at the mouth as they advocate for more and more javelins to be sent to Ukraine. Right. And no one is no one on the Democratic Party is seems seeming seemingly aware of how this looks to the average American who is still in the middle of an economic crisis. Oh, I completely agree. They're saying we're going to ask you to sacrifice. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thanks for making these sacrifices. They're saying this to the American people, and a lot of the American people are going to say, "Wait a minute, I didn't agree to make I didn't sacrifices." Sacrifice. You just ripped the bread out of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. You stole. You took my baby for me. You raised my gas prices. Yeah. How many celebrities keep saying, "Oh, I'm happy to pay more in gas yeah. prices because it's for a good cause. It's for Ukraine." Well, you can do that, but a lot of people can't. Yeah. A lot of people can't, and they didn't. They didn't sign up for it. They didn't vote for this. They didn't approve this. This was not 
Th th this decision was not made at the level of democratic accountability. This just happened. In fact, maybe they thought they were voting for the candidate who was going to get us out of these entanglements yeah. because now they've all, the last five have all said they would do that. But Biden really said he would. And, and then he actually did with Afghanistan. Right to get us into another thing. Yeah. I mean, the timing of it, and I asked a guest on my show this, and maybe I'm being overly cynical, but the, the unexpected boon of the Afghanistan withdrawal, even though he got a lot of flack from elected from it, the public, the public was very uh, approving of it, followed so quickly by the escalation in Ukraine. After he is, was already, already served as um, you know, a special emissary to the region, after all the connections with his son in the region, it, you know, from the most cynical, you know, America is just a war state imperial power kind of perspective. It all just does seem too neat. Mm -hmm. It seems too neat and too perfect. And it makes me increasingly not want to give him even credit for doing the right mm -hmm. thing in Afghanistan. Yeah. It's, you know, wh why don't these wealthy celebrities and Democrats and political figures who want it, why can't they just give the money then? Why, why do, <laughs> working people who can't afford it are being asked to pay for it? Well, nobody, well, that's the thing, right? Be like, no one actually is paying for it because the reality of how the, you know, U.S. economy works, right, they just, just they print the money our, and it yeah. goes. So the question is, you know, if they, th this should be proving the case right. that leftists have been making for a really long time. When you want to spend money on something, you can spend money on it. When they sent Americans checks, a year or two ago, it taught a lot of Americans that the government ignoring their problems is a choice. When they put, establish a moratorium on evictions to help half the country from living in the street as they lost their jobs in the middle of a pandemic, that demonstrated to a lot of people that the government can make choices. When they postponed stu the student debt and put the moratorium on student debt so that people didn't have to pay two, three, four, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars a month as they had lost their jobs again in the middle of the pandemic, that demonstrated to people that the government is making ch choices every day. People say that poverty is a policy choice. And when they randomly print up $40 billion to send to people on the other side of the world, not even as humanitarian aid, by the way, but in, in, forms of bo in, the, in the form of rockets, <laughs> rockets. by the way, which is a feedback loop to the interest right. groups in America that that's, are building that's these. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it is yeah. teaching America exactly what the government does and what the government is for, and that it is not in service of them. It's for all of the Raytheon lobbyists and right. all the Lockheed Martin lobbyists that not only contributed to the campaign to get these people elected on both sides of the aisle, but who literally are in Biden's cabinet right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely right. As, as Nancy Pelosi might have said, that when there's only one uh, footprint in the sand, one track of footprints, that's when the defense contractor <laughs> carried, carried America. We'll have more rising right after this.